it is impossible even even if you actually know in detail the destination it's impossible for you to get directions to point b if you don't input the information for point a so when when you think about plugging something into your gps it's taking into account where you are currently at Welcome, everybody, back to another exciting show of the About That Water podcast. I have the awesome pleasure to chat with you from Stephen Stack. Uh, I actually met him in FinCon. Um, and one of the reasons why I want to bring him on the show, because he has an awesome mindset around building finance and actually loves staying in the shadows, um, but also willing to pour into the community. And the cool thing about Steven Stack is that he's also a financial consultant and coach, uh, where his mission is to help others build wealth um, holistically. He is 100% debt free, which includes paying off a six figure mortgage. He has also became a millionaire by age 31 through investing primarily in real estate and stock market. He believes wealth isn't just what's in your bank, but also the person you're becoming. How you doing today, Steve? I'm doing all right, man. It's good to be here. Awesome. Uh, I know it's been a lot uh, since we met up um, in FinCon. Um, I was like, dude, you're more than qualified to be up on the stage here. I was like, why is this guy hanging back? Like, what's going on? Um, I have to say your energy and, and your poise about all of this financial stuff has been amazing. I love the energy. And I love what you bring to the table. Um, So, you know, going through your journey um, and your business, how's how's business going? Uh, It's it's going uh, very well, actually. Um, And especially if if we just kind of sync back to pandemic starting in 2020, it really awakened people to just how important money or finance really is when the world stopped. Yep. So uh, a lot of folks really realize, hey, I'm not in as good a space as I'd like to be. And I want to be more intentional about that. So it, it, it's a, uh, it's been a, a pretty great stretch. Nice. Um, what got you into real estate in the first place? So it, it kind of almost feel like it was almost like destined. Um, so uh, uh, a story that, that I always remember very vividly is being eight years old. We had gone on a family vacation uh, as, as a kid. And I always like to say, man, we were at the motel. So not the hotel, but the motel. Like we're actually outside you know, where you pull up to the door, uh, where are you going to stay? <laughs> so, but, uh, I remember, I remember being there at the motel. We're going to check in, uh, as a family and my mind kind of wandering to, man, I wonder who owns this place. Mm. And I know that's not like the typical thought probably of an eight year old, but my mind just kind of went there and I, and I understood that, um, the, the, whether it was the housekeeping people or, you know, the receptionist or concierge, like I knew they weren't the owner. So I'm like, somebody is collecting on this whole enterprise, which, you know, I wasn't using words like enterprise at age eight. Um, but just, you know, I kind of had a thought for it. So it, it, it just continued from from there to eventually getting a little older uh in in college and then coming out of school where where i just understood hey i'm not going to be able to save my way to wealth i'm going to have to invest and real estate just made a lot of sense to me in addition to the stock market but but real estate was one of those things that made sense to me of people need a place to live and if if i buy it well and 
people are paying me more than what it costs for me to own it, then then that's where I would make make money. So that was just kind of the the simple thought process there. Uh, now, was it something that your dad got you into um, to start talking about money? Like, what was that the pivotal point in your lifestyle that actually caused you to start thinking about money differently? So it's it's funny. My my um my dad like when when coming up, my dad would actually do uh like things in the the church that we attended uh when when I was coming up like he would actually teach like finance classes um through something it's kind of old school for so some people they may know it was called crown financial uh but it just had some uh money kind of basics so I got to see that uh coming up as a kid that that stuff would be discussed um but for for me the the pivotal moment for me was that i knew about not spending more than what i made and i knew about being able to save some money like putting some money aside for saving but i didn't really know about the whole kind of investing slash wealth building uh angle of things and so I had made up my mind, hey, I'm going to learn. I'm going to figure out how to do it. And once I do, I want to be able to bring a bunch of other people with me of, of teaching others of how to build wealth in a sustainable way. All right. So most of us um, in this financial space teach people how to pretty much manage their money. And mm-hmm. then you taking the approach, all right, Let's take this to the next level. Let's help you grow your money. And what are those first steps uh, that you guide people through to help them grow their money? So uh, what, what I like to do just right out of the gate is basically do like a financial uh, health check or health screening of, of saying, okay, where, where do you stand? So what, what assets do you have? Meaning what do you own? And what liabilities do you have? Meaning, what do you owe? So let's let's see where you're at on that end, and then also look at what's what's your income, what's your expenses that that come into play, just so we have a feel for where you're at. Because because the thing people need to understand is if you're trying to get somewhere, let's let's say you're trying to go on a, a journey or a trip yeah. somewhere. It is impossible, even even if you actually know in detail the destination, right. it's impossible for you to get directions to point B if you don't input the information for point A. So when when you think about plugging something into your GPS, it's taking into account where you are currently at. Mm-hmm. So the the first thing I look to do is help people assess where are you? What is point A? And then we can talk about point B of of trying to flesh out what what point B is, like where you're trying to get to. And then we start to talk through things of, hey, well, what's what's right at your disposal? Uh, Do you have, you know, like a work sponsored uh plan that could be like a 401k or 403b a tsp a thrift savings plan or or a 457 you know what what are the things that are right here in front of you and then also what are some of the things that you may be eligible for so like a a a roth ira for instance has income limits uh, of how much you can contribute to it um it, there's there's different treatments depending on your age. So if you're 50 or older, you can contribute more than if you're under age 50. You know what I mean? So like just trying to get get the bearings on what what are some of the foundational things before getting to potentially some of the more complex uh, ways or strategies of building wealth or even talking about like real estate and 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 things of that sort. 
Yeah. And understanding those tax, um, as you could say, the tax environment, because a lot of people talk about the the Roth process. And I had to talk to the tax accountant that's on it that comes on the show frequently about that. Um, and so because I file, I'm married filing separately because I'm married filing separately, I cannot contribute to my Roth. I make too much. You're supposed to make under like $10,000 according to the IRS stack of as of, you know, year 2022 mm-hmm. until they change it. Um, and that's the beauty of taxes. It's like you have to re up on those on an annual basis. Um, so now that somebody has their foundational, uh, set up. What is uh, the next step now? So they already told you where point B is at. They already have point A. So pretty much you go, you are the GPS to get them to that next level. Um, so where do you start there? Yeah, so we, we try to define where, where are you trying to go, uh, in what time frame, and, and then try to talk through, okay, what are some different strategies to get you there? Uh, what what are you willing to do? Because uh, so for for some people, they may say they may start out saying, hey, you know, I want to get from point A to point B in 10 years. Right. And then you start talking through, hey, here's some ways that you could potentially do that. And they may sit back and say, oh, man, I don't think I want to do all that. Right. You know, I want to kind of live it up a little bit more. <laughs> so maybe let's do 15. Um, or, or maybe they sit back and say, oh man, that's it. That's all I got to do, man. Could, could I do it in, in seven years? Could I do it in five and, and try to, you know, tweak some of the numbers and, and just see what's, what's possible. Um, because people have different situations. A person could just be single where it's like, Hey, I'm only considering myself. They could be uh, just married, but no kids, uh, or they could have a bunch of kids, you know? And so it's like, okay, well, I want to be in a pretty good space, but I also want to carve out some money, uh, for, for my children, maybe whether it be for, uh, potentially for retirement, if they can earn some type of an income, or it could be, Hey, I want to put money away for education, uh, which, which those, uh, expenses have, actually skyrocketed quite a bit uh, over over the past uh, years leading up to today. But, you know, so that's that's kind of the fun part of it, of getting into the weeds of, OK, well, what what do you really want to do? Uh, what what are you willing to commit to? Because because ultimately you can lay a blueprint, but they have to do it. Yeah, no, a lot of people aren't willing to make that sacrifice. Um so for those who aren't willing to take that, uh, to make that sacrifice in their journey, um, do you kind of coax or coach them through that or just kind of tell them, well, the same for you <laughs> you go back to the drawing board Your dreams are just pipe dreams at this point. Right. Well, I mean, I've, I've been really fortunate that I haven't really had anybody who, it was just like I'm not I'm I'm not committed. I don't I don't want to to press forward at all um, in trying to to get there. I think some of so some of the dynamic may be even just assessing what is their end game. Y- you know, um, so I'll give you kind of example of what I mean is that. You know, for, for many people, they, they may say, hey, if I could have $10 million, I'm just throwing out a number right. that they'd be, oh, man, that would be phenomenal. Uh, I'd be able to do this, this, this and this. And then you start to really get into the teeth of, of what it could take to get there. And then they start to realize, OK, r- really, I may not actually need $10 million to live in a way that is better than what it is today and they may they may peel it back and say oh man 750,000 which by the way is still a lot of money three quarters of a million dollars they may look at that and say okay well this this gets me to a place where I'm not thinking as much about money in day-to-day decisions as 
as I use. So like some of a way to think of it is for, for some, they may say, Hey, I, I never want to retire, which by the way, I, I, I have no problem saying this. I plan to always work. Okay. You, you know, like, so even though I've made plenty to be retireable, I just have a great passion for, for people and, and the stuff that I do that I'm like, Hey, I, I would always want to be moving and, and, and active. Um, and there's a lot of people that feel that way for different reasons. Um, but they may just say, okay, maybe I'm working, but I just don't have to do as much of the work that I don't want to do. So I need, I need to just generate X amount of dollars uh, a month or annually. And, having some money already built up allows me to more comfortably do that. So for somebody, they may say, Hey man, I want to drive an ice cream truck. Right. And if I can get enough money to where that kind of income would sustain me, then that may be the way they go. Or, Hey, I want to work at a rec center. So I still need to make some money. Right. Um, but it's, it's a different type of work. You know, yeah, and that's one of the things that um I'm starting to understand is going through this financial process is starting to make me think about you know going to the gym. I don't go to the gym because I, <laughs> I, I know I, I ain't gonna get time to go out there. I'm not gonna get my money's worth. I don't. But I noticed that you did what was it 300 days in a row? <laughs> <laughs> they like have to pass out. <laughs> so tell us a little bit of, uh, about that for those who don't follow you yet, uh, but looking to follow you and what drives you to kind of push yourself to those limits? Yeah. So when, when I uh, set out uh, for this year, 2022, what I wanted to do is do at least 200 days of exercise for the year, which if you do the quick math on that, that comes out to about four days a week uh, is the average. Um, but by setting out that kind of goal of saying at least 200 days of exercise, what it, what it did is it said, Hey, even if I exercise every single day with no breaks, right. That still would take me more than half the year to hit that. Mm -hmm. Cause I can't, I can't rush the days. Like it doesn't matter how long I exercise. It's just one day right. for each day. So I, I kind of purposely put it that way. Um, but I chose to disclose that publicly to people of saying, Hey, this is something that I'm setting out to do this year, which I actually already hit the 200 days and upped it to 275. Let's go. Let's go. Um, yeah. Just to say, I'm going I'm to keep going. Um, but the reason why I chose to publicly disclose it to uh, folks that follow me on social media is because I wanted it to be like a physical object lesson of what discipline and consistency looks like physically mm -hmm. with, with health and fitness, but saying, hey, this same thing applies financially of being consistent and disciplined over time. And here's the trick of it is it's much harder to stay physically fit than it is to be financially fit. Mm. You can say that again for the people in the back. Right, right, right. right, right. <laughs> it's much harder. Trust me, it's much harder to stay physically fit than to stay financially fit. And so it, it it was something that I thought would really encourage people. Plus health really is wealth. And, and I would say, man, what good does it do me if I have a seven figure financial portfolio with three figure health? Mm. Okay. Yeah. You, you, you see what I'm saying? It's like, man, you can have all of this money built up multi millions but if your body's falling apart, you're really hustling back 
backwards or another way I'll put it is like this. So this might be something you want to clip this up is to sacrifice your health to get material wealth is like selling the engine of your car for fuel. Mm. Okay. It doesn't make sense. It doesn't make sense. No. So we, we want things to be holistic. And of course, it's not just money and it's not just physical health. It's also just, you know, the quality of your relationships, whether that be, you know, friends, family, the community, uh, like what's, what's your emotional well-being, mental well-being, spiritual well-being, like how does all this stuff play out? Because to me, the goal is not to be wealthy, but a jerk. Right, right. <laughs> so Don't just, just, just my two cents. I had that to, <laughs> like, how do I go on beyond that? Um, because it gets you to think of, I forgot one of the people at FanCon mentioned how to get over your adversities by creating habits. So what are those habits that keep you going? Because it seems like right now from the outside looking in, a lot of people can be looking at it. Well, you already won the game at this point. What else is there for you? The same thing that they'll probably say for Snoop Dogg. Like, you're, the, you already won all the bonus rounds. Like, now you're just over in other countries just playing around at this point. So it's like, how do you keep keep going, keep pushing yourself? What habits are you um, injecting in your life? Yeah, yeah. Well, 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 first off, what I would say to those that are listening is it's really the habits that got me here. Mm. So if if it it if it's really worked to help me get to this level of success why would i then stop you know if if that's what helped me lift uh to this place so the i've always been a joy in the journey kind of a person of of the 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 wealth is actually in the process of doing it in the journey of seeing things through and that's really what's helped help me to stay consistent so yes yeah, some of those habits is yes I'm, I'm regularly going to to exercise to take care of my body and drink plenty of water um because if i if i want to build generational wealth man I, I would like to be around to see <laughs> the generations take it you, yeah. you know what I mean? And, and be able to walk alongside the next generation, you know, um, and advise them hopefully in, in old age. Um, so I want to increase the, the likelihood that I'm going to be around uh, for that on the health end. I'm a lifelong learner, so I'm constantly reading. I'll, I'll read books. I'll, uh, and in a lot of ways, I'll, I'll do like a, a audible of, of listening to audio books. Um, which uh, just a little knowledge hack for the people is I'm always listening to stuff at multiples over normal speed. So like at a minimum, I'm listening to something at one and a half times, but typically it's normally like two X, even with YouTube videos. Trust me the I think the maximum speed is one and a half times. That's where I'm at. If I'm listening to a book, I'm, I'm speeding it up. So I can uh, digest the information uh, faster, um, which gives me an edge in uh, not only my, my personal you know, development, but especially leading other people, trying to give insight into current events that are going on. I want to be able to devour the information quickly so that I can provide more value uh, to the people that I serve, whether it be clients or even just, just, just helping people in general. Nice. Uh, and for those of you who are listening on Spotify, they just increased their speed up to 3.5. Um, <laughs> so I listen in at three points at three X speed at this point. Um, Cause I got, I've been listening at two X for over the past two and a, yeah, two and a half years. I've been listening at two X. So my brain is already trained, uh, trained for that. So yeah. nice. <laughs> those habits so because like you want to digest the information and plus 
you know, being a, a podcast host, I listen to so many people's stuff. I need to get that info in. Yeah. It's one of those life hacks, you know, that nobody really talked about. Right. Yeah. Right, right, right. Yeah. It just it just it helps a ton in being able to get get information. Uh so as we move on to the third segment, uh, which is about your future. Where do you see yourself in the next two years and also about your business as well? So that's a really, really good question. Um, Some of it I'm actually fleshing out literally as we speak. Uh, I would like to write another book. Uh, So that's that's something. That it, and I'm not even talking about in the next two years. Like that's something I already know what the concept is, what the title of it will be, um, and just directionally what what I want it to be. I, I think it'll be uh, fantastic. Just because for me, I so I'm a doer, like, and I try to write in a way that people can read it, digest it, and then action it. So concepts are great, which I, you know, I like to give concepts, but I want it to be in a practical way that people can apply. So that's something that's kind of right on my mind, hot off the presses of, yes, I I want to write um, another book. I, I want to scale up the business and it's just really more for more impact of being able to touch more people. Um, I think there's phenomenal people in the financial space. I'm I'm always blown away when I get to meet so many of these individuals and the things that they're doing. Um, And I just look at it as, Hey, being able to add my voice to that and in my own personal uh, perspective and journey and the people that I've been able to meet along the way, or just given given insight of, hey, it's not just you know budgets or which accounts to use or what's the capitalization rate for this real estate property, you know, and you know all that kind of stuff. But saying, okay, well, what does it really look like to be successful with having success? Mm-hmm. Because because if you never address the internal stuff, more money doesn't fix that. In many ways, it magnifies what's already there. So if you were a jerk before, you you probably gonna be a sober jerk <laughs> uh, when you get more. If if you really cared about people before and wanted to help, man, now you have more space for more impact in that care uh, that you provide for, for others and looking out for others. So, so th- those would be things that I'm uh, looking to do. That's, that's my thought process. Uh, this is a side question. Like what drives you every day? Like to get up, do what you do. Honestly, man, it's, uh, so I, I'm, I'm, I'm a, a man of faith. So for me, it's really driven around, uh, loving God and loving people. And I'm able to do that uh, through the way I serve, uh, through the the expertise and the information that I've been able to acquire over time and that I continue to. So I'm like, man, I, I really look at things as, hey, man, I'm blessed to be a blessing. So those are things that really get me, get me moving each day. Okay. Um, I have to ask this because you're in real estate and real estate has been a hot topic, definitely in the news lately. Um, People right now who say if they are two person household um, and one of them want to buy a house, do you actually like, what, what are your, I guess you could say the five things that somebody would need to get into real estate. So if if we're talking about two married people trying to get started, um, probably one of the the simplest things, because I mean, I don't know how deep into their relationship they are, but let's let's say they just got together. Um, 
I'm a fan of looking to try to house hack in some type of way, whether it be, and, and I don't want to assume people know what that means. So saying you, you buy a property that you're going to live in uh, and do some type of renting out of your space. So if it's a multifamily, like say a duplex, you're living in one side and you're renting out the other side to help cover some of, if not maybe all of your your holding costs. Or it could look like you could have a single family, but you're doing something like short-term rentals, like an Airbnb for some of the space uh, that, that you uh, are living in, that you stay in. So moving your way in that direction, you, you want to be in a space where if you're doing good, healthy money habits, that's going to help with increasing your credit score, which will allow you to be able to acquire property at less, less cost to you, you know, being able to potentially get a better interest rate that you lock in. Um, you're going to need to exercise the discipline of putting monies aside to be able to build up the funds for a down payment, whether you do like an FHA loan, that's three and a half percent, which by the way, I think that's a pretty good, good direction to look at going because you have less capital that you have to extend out uh, to, to get the property. And then you need to remember some of these other things that come with it. Like there's other closing costs and origination fees. Uh, I always encourage people to get an inspection done of the property. Um, you're gonna have to pay money for an appraisal. Um, you're going to have to do something uh, called putting earnest money down, uh, which it's just it's just money that you're setting aside to say, hey, I'm serious about making this purchase uh, in in the process of buying a home. Um, so th there, there's a lot of different kind of pieces that come along with just trying to get started um, in the space and don't be. Don't be fearful about what you don't know to the point that you don't act. Because for me, I was in my super early 20s. This was during the Great Recession, you know, back in that 08, 09 to 2010 time frame when I started. And it's crazy when I look back and think about how much stuff I didn't know. Mm -hmm. But I knew enough to be dangerous. I knew I knew how to add, subtract, sure. multiply and divide, mm -hmm. uh, which was plenty enough to say, OK, I know what this property should cost by doing something called a comparative market analysis or CMA. So saying like, hey, if everything's all the way fixed up and ready to roll, this is how much it should be versus this is how much it is. And these are some of the repairs that will be associated with it. These are the, the rents that can be commanded uh, with getting this space. And it, it wasn't as much rocket science as some would make it out to be. Now, of course, you start to get better with it over time. You can figure out different systems and things like that to just be smoother in the acquisition process. But, but like I said, most people, they just start where they start with the place they live in yeah <laughs> you know so, like some people they ain't even trying to house hack it's like hey they they bought a place and it's like oh crap i gotta move um and they couldn't sell the house and they're like well now i'm kind of forced into being a landlord i need to rent it out because i don't want to have two mortgages or paying a mortgage and rent in a new town and then they just figure it out from there so don't be paralyzed by fear more than likely you you know enough to get it done i like that thank you sir because i'm sure a lot of people actually take advantage of that and um because most of the people of my listeners are analytical so mm -hmm. they'll actually take that and and withdraw it and hopefully i don't get a lot of backlash later <laughs> to make sure i ask that question <laughs> yeah yeah it's okay it's okay if, if they give you too much you can you can put it on me <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, you ready for the final four questions? Yeah, sure. Go ahead, shoot.
Uh, what does wealth mean to you? So, like I had said, or just what was said in the beginning, I said, you know, wealth goes beyond your bank account to the person you're becoming. So when I think of wealth, I think, I think of material wealth, of course, you know, like actual money and, you know, assets and things like that. But I also think about health. I think about quality of relationships. Um, I think about just, just my overall well being as a human. So again, uh, spiritually, emotionally, mentally, that everything is in tune. Um, and to me, that all in concert together is really wealth for, for me. Um, and if any of them is super out of whack, then, then it's, not, it's not ideal. Because again, you do want to have enough material wealth that you can own your time. Mm-hmm. which helps your mental well-being, your emotional well-being, potentially your uh, spiritual well-being, and even your relational well-being. You know what I mean? So all this stuff matters. But we all know people or maybe you, your favorite celebrity couple or whatever who's got a ton of money, but relationally, it's a complete disaster. Mm-hmm. Or family-wise, uh, they're not speaking to their parents, siblings, uh, spouse, you name it. Um, so there's got to be more to it than just the money. Yeah. Nice. Uh, question number two, what was your worst money mistake? So, so like at scale and it's, it's one that I still remember to this day, um, is it happened early. I was in college and like I figured out, oh man, I can't save my way to wealth. So um, someone had come to me with like a real estate deal that uh, seemed too good to be true, but just that was amazing and that I'd be able to get a multiple on my money quickly. Yeah. Um, and so I had invested uh, somewhere there about to about 1500 to $2,000, which you got to think in college, man, it's big money. It's a lot. Of, it was a lot of money, uh, relative to what I was bringing in at the time. Um, and so I didn't really know how the investment worked. Like I knew my end, right. but I didn't have a real understanding of all of what the investment would be. And you guessed it, it definitely flopped. Uh, It didn't work out. The money was like, poof. Um, But I learned an incredibly valuable lesson of when you invest in something, understand what the dynamics of it is. Like, so how, how does everybody make money? Don't just think about yourself, but think about the win for everyone involved and and if you can't really clearly articulate that then you don't actually know what you're investing in so that that was that was a big one for me but i'm I'm glad i learned it pretty early yeah that's especially in the mid-20s yeah good time uh what was your favorite financial or non-financial book who um so I'm gonna I'm gonna give you I'm gonna give you a few I'm gonna give you a few because that 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 would be really hard to narrow down to one. Just an easy layman's read for people would be uh, the Millionaire Next Door. That's that's a classic book. Uh, I encourage people read the the latest edition just because it's got more contemporary examples on that one. Um, there's there's a book for for those who. Uh, want to be more like socially conscious and thinking about like uh, racial dynamics, things like that. There's a book called The Color of Money uh, by a lady named uh, Mirsa Baradaran. Really good read. Mm. It it takes things from uh, from basically right after slavery up to essentially now. I think I think it goes up to around like 2017 or something like that. Um, 
but it just walks through what particularly black people have gone through financially and black banks and and things things of that sort really good comprehensive read on that subject so th- those are two ones that i personally really like look at this my man got the book <laughs> That's yeah, what I I'm talking about. Yeah, yeah. This is a really good read. Yes. Sure. Yes. So phenomenal book, uh, speaking on the racial wealth gap. Um, if if you don't have any context into it, you'll come away from it with a great grasp on where we have been, which will help inform uh, more clearly where we are. Man. Yeah, there is some good read. Um, I actually just started this book during FinCon. So, mm. but obviously met other authors. So I've been putting that book on pause to read their books to get them ready to be prepped up for the show. So <laughs> perfect, perfect. I understand, man. You're you're a man of research. I'm I'm good with that. <laughs> uh last question here, uh of the final four which is, what is your favorite dish to make? Oh, man. So I am I am a simple man. I'm a man of the people. Okay. 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 So pretty much anything breakfast-oriented, I'm always in the mood for. So, like, I'm, if, if you take me to, like, a diner, I'm probably going to get some type of a breakfast sampler that const- it's constituted of some scrambled eggs, mm-hmm. uh, like some kind of like maybe like hash brown type of setup, uh, you know, maybe sausage or bacon. If I got to choose between the two, if if I don't, I'd love to have both. Right. Um, <laughs> so and, and then, you know, you throw some pancakes on the side or, you know, waffle or French toast or something like that. So for me, right. it would just be because it's simple, doesn't take take long to make but it's satisfying so simple yet satisfying that's that's me right there nice yeah i usually uh i think on google maps or what i did at one point i was actually mapping out all the places that did breakfast all day so (laughs) big facts (laughs) like not everybody can make pancakes but for some reason some people can do good waffles like how you have messed up pancake batter, but the waffles taste better than that. Like just spread it out. You can get it in there. <laughs> right. I don't know, man. I don't know. I mean, it it should, uh, you know, it should be simple. You know, just pour the batter, right. flip it over, <laughs> you know, at a reasonable amount of time. You can literally eyeball it. Um, but, uh, you know, hey, we're, we're we're men of the people, man. You know, so even if even if your waffles and your pancakes ain't hitting, we still love you. Okay, we do. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Stephen. Well, it's been a pleasure here. So I have one final last question for final last one last question uh, for everybody, and this is for the people. Where could people find out more about you, your company, all about you? Yeah. So, a couple ways you can find me. First, I have a website. It's just Stephen with a V L stack.com. So S T E V E N L stack S T A C K.com. So that's one way to find me. By the way, I get asked this a lot. My actual last name is stack. Yes, I know that's shocking. I talk money and, and stack. Yeah, I know. I know for real. So <laughs> that's one way is the website. Um, and on social media, like you can find me on IG um, at stacking with stack, S T A C K I N G with stack on IG, same for Facebook, same for TikTok. On, on Twitter, it's just Stephen L. Stack. Um, but uh, yeah, you can find me probably most active on ig at this time but but i do try to post in in all these different uh realms so all right so if you guys want to see steven stack you know dancing around on tiktok hold on (laughs) (laughs) right uh but for everybody steven it's been a pleasure having you on the show um make sure you guys uh 
follow him. Uh, please support this guy. He's been doing some amazing things. And, you know, maybe you might get some followers out there. He might follow you to see you on your 200 workout. <laughs> um, you know, to cheer you on from the sidelines as he's passed out from the 200th one day. So, <laughs> see how that goes. <laughs> uh, we want to make sure that uh, we show all love. So, if you found any value in this particular episode, please make sure you like, subscribe, and share. Um, if you found or find that somebody else is interested in growing their uh, financial journey, make sure that you share this episode, leave a comment because it does help out other people find me. And so that we can also support uh, everybody that's been on this show. All right, everybody, y'all be safe. Thank you. Mom.